Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the end of TGCon Live 2020. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Solution Spotlight webinar on Smart Alerts from Trace Gains. My name is Matthew Passananti, and I'll begin today's session by providing you with an overview of the product. Following the presentation, I'll turn it over to our sales operations manager, Ruben Galbraith, who will guide us through the product demonstration. And finally, we'll open up the last 15 minutes of the webinar to a question and answer session. And if you have a question or you think of one during the presentation or demo, please let us know by typing it into the chat box and we'll be happy to answer the questions at that time. Again, thank you very much for being with us today. It's a pleasure to present on such an amazing solution to the food, supplements, and CPG industries. I'm excited to be here. You should be too. Let's go ahead and get started. Today, we'll provide an introduction to Smart Alerts from Trace Gains. Smart Alerts is an add-on to our supplier management module that enables companies to monitor threats and regulatory risk within their supply chain in real time. Most importantly, we connect these alerts to the items and ingredients that matter most to your organization. We'll begin with a brief overview of supply chain risk, and then we'll talk about common challenges that customers are facing as they try and minimize that risk. We'll discuss current approaches that companies are taking in the you know, food, supplement, and consumer packaged goods industries that help really identify, validate, and action external sources of risk data. And we'll even share some of the impacts that accompany these decisions. We'll then discuss how Smart Alerts from Trace Gains is your best source for staying on top of safety, incident, and fraud information with the capability to compromise your supply chain. We'll discuss the data sources that we connect with and then provide a solution demo, followed by a question and answer session. Now, we recently surveyed our customer base of brand manufacturers and suppliers and found that the majority of challenges they face are all derived from the same problem. 80% of their data required to run their business resides within their global supply chain. And when it comes to managing supply chain risk, these critical data sources exist solely outside of the organization. And though quality control is one of the most utmost importance to almost every company, there's no amount of quality control that could protect an organization from supply chain risk. All companies need to take the necessary steps to ensure the safety of items that enter their inventory. If you use compromised items to produce your products, the consequences can be severe. You can stop production, waste valuable resource time, or dramatically damage your brand through a recall or negative publicity. We established Smart Alerts to help solve many of the common challenges our customers were facing in obtaining information from these external data sources. They qualify and connect to and collaborate suppliers to source and connect items. The quality of products they produce is mainly dependent upon the quality of the raw materials and items and ingredients provided by the suppliers. And because of this, it's imperative to understand the risks involved in selecting suppliers, locations, and raw materials. So here's some of the most common challenges we see in the market today. To level set every company that participates in contributing to or, or sourcing from the global supply chain has to be aware of common dangers such as economically motivated adulteration, fraud, and incidents that can occur without warning, like higher levels of pesticides and heavy metals. We have an increasingly global supply chain, and that makes it increasingly difficult to identify bad actors with the intent to put safety, quality, and traceability of your supply chain at risk. Manually reviewing a myriad of external data sources to uncover relevant issues or, or periodically checking into the statuses of relevant regulatory regulations, is it's, it's slow and it allows problems to go undetected for long periods of time. And if you want to take the information you gather and cross-check it against your suppliers, their locations, or even specific ingredient categories, you'll be required to spend a significant amount of time on those efforts. And finally, maintaining compliance with FISMA forces buyers to continuously monitor their suppliers and ingredients for risk, while also tracking reported events throughout the supply chain. So if you happen to be experiencing these types of challenges, we're, we're sure your business is a candidate for smart alerts. With Smart Alerts from Trace Gains, we can not only solve these problems, but we can streamline your risk management processes as well. The problems we're bringing to light are symptoms of inefficient processes employed by businesses. Let me explain. If you're managing supply chain risk for your organization, you're likely spending your days buried in manual tasks. Many companies utilize a search engine like Google to source ingredients, and it's logical for them to think, 
why not use it to manage supply chain risk as well? You set up Google alerts with keywords for your suppliers, their ingredients, and the countries from which they're sourced. The problem is that Google alerts weren't designed to detect supply chain risks such as fraud or allergens. So even though Google may provide you with an alert, you still need to spend the time investigating the alert to determine its validity and its severity. Maybe you're spending your time sifting through trade associations or industry outlets to find the needed information. These sources do a very good job of reporting regulatory issues like Prop 65 and EU bans on specific substances. The problem with these sources is that they don't do a very good job of reporting on regulatory issues in a timely fashion. In general, this information is reactive, not proactive, and often not as immediate as companies would like. One other source you may be looking at is a paid database where you can scan food incidents and regulatory status. And though this information can be really helpful, the main problem here with this tool is that they offer a proprietary application or website from which you have to obtain this information. And though you may not have the information, or you may actually have the information you're looking for, you need to spend time to manually reconcile what you've learned with what you're doing. The common problems you may be experiencing in trying to manage your supply chain and in such a manual fashion is that the information is disparate and it's not actionable. You either have to sift through hundreds of alerts in your email box, scour trade associations and industry outlets, or reconcile data from proprietary applications before you can even begin to synthesize it, this data and really glean any drop of value. What you need is an automated solution that obtains the data for you on a daily basis, reconciles it against the suppliers, ingredients, and locations that matter most to you, and allow your business to integrate that data into your existing system exposing it alongside the supply chain data that you already use. You need a comprehensive and automated solution to manage supply chain risk. And that's exactly what Trace Gains is offering with Smart Alerts. Smart Alerts from Trace Gains is your best source of regulatory safety, incident, and fraud information in the food, supplement, and CPG industries. It integrates seamlessly into both supplier management and market hub and establishes itself as a real-time single source of truth for all of your risk-based research and monitoring needs. With Smart Alerts, you can pinpoint risk by ingredient, additive, flavoring, substance, contamination source, and more. You can research by commodity, country of origin, and threat type, among others. It's a great tool for preparing or updating your food safety plan because it helps you eliminate those known or reasonably foreseeable hazards. Staying current is simple with automatic, automatic alerts for your approved suppliers, their items, ingredients, and formulas, as well as daily system updates on new and emerging issues. Customers utilize smart alerts to manage their supply chain risk, but in reality, they get so much more. For one, they're able to accelerate new product development with faster ingredient research and supplier approval through a single user interface. They're also pinpointing risk and threats for ingredient attributes such as additives, nutrition, flavoring substance, food safety, emerging science, and more. They obtain immediate access to, to ingredient equivalencies offered by alternative suppliers and customers that can set automatic alerts for key ingredients to stay on top of issues and regulatory status changes for the markets that impact their distribution. When integrating with other trace gain solutions, companies can continually monitor and manage supply chain risk in a single system. Smart Alerts from Trace Gains is powered by centralizing research and data from hundreds of industry data sources. It's your best option for obtaining regulatory, safety, incident, and fraud information on a daily basis. Smart Alerts not only monitors global and domestic problems like fraud, adulteration, and import refusals, but it includes advisories and warnings, regulatory status, and adverse incident reports as well. So here you'll see a brief summary of some of the most active data sources that are included within the Smart Alerts library. And I'd like to take a moment to talk about a few of our data sources. Smart Alerts has a comprehensive taxonomy that combines hundreds of data sources, including recall data from the FDA and the Rapid Alert system for food and feed. Many recalls are product-based, which usually includes multiple ingredients, and our proprietary taxonomy is not product-based, but happens to be ingredient-based. And this means that we provide an additional process to compute relationships and ensure that the warnings are targeted towards the right ingredients for our customers. This simply equates to more accurate recall data for the items and ingredients in your supply chain. 
In addition, the University of Minnesota provides trace gains with direct access to two comprehensive data sources curated by the Food Protection and Defense Institute. The Food Adulteration Incident Report uh, Registry, or FAIR, and the World Factbook, which offer valuable historical ingredient usage data. Trace Gains integrates these two data sets into Smart Alerts to prevent food safety issues and supply chain disruptions. And the additional data provided by the FDPI, FPDI delivers market intelligence gleaned from the University of Minnesota's subject matter expertise, data fusion, and analysis to a broader audience. We're collecting domestic and international incidents where analyzing food fraud and adulteration signals and all kinds of other adverse incident reports. At this point, I'd like to bring, our, bring in Ruben Galbraith, our software sales engineer, to provide a demo covering many of the scenarios we've spoken about today. You'll see how Smart Alerts from Trace Gains enables companies to monitor threats and regulatory risk in real time with their supply chain, how Trace Gains offers an integrated monitoring solution complete with risk ingredient sourcing and supplier management capabilities. Ruben will show you how automated alerts can be configured to immediately notify you of supply chain risk and regulatory updates, as well as how to properly track ingredient innovation by conducting ingredient research and identifying the right suppliers for your next product. You'll see how to expedite compliance checks and speed up go, no-go assessments on materials, ingredients, and recipes in order to get products to market faster. And you'll witness the fast and accurate regulatory research that eliminates time spent tracking down regulations and ingredient requirements by using tools that speed up the process to increase the accuracy of compliance assessments. And finally, you'll be shown how to manage regulatory shifts by proactively updating necessary product development, quality, and supply chain processes. This audience is in ex excellent hands. Ruben, it's all yours. Take it away, buddy. Thank you for that introduction. So now we're going to take a pretty brief tour of our Smart Alerts module, where you can, as our webpage says, monitor the threats and regulatory risks for your supply chain in real time. Now, instead of hopping right into the heart of the module, I thought we'd take a little bit of a different angle of attack. So I'm going to hop over here into Market Hub, and I'm going to do a little search for curry powder. Now, I've got a feeling a lot of folks on the call here today in this session use Market Hub already, probably in conjunction with our supplier management module. Think of the use case where you're sourcing a new ingredient, maybe something you've used before, you just need to find a new supplier. Or in the use case I'm going to follow through on today, let's say you're looking at a brand new ingredient. And you want to not just consider if you can source it in a particular form, but what other risk factors may be around this ingredient. If you need to be worried about sourcing it from a certain country, if there are particular regulatory statuses worth investigating. Now, if you've done a search recently, I suppose if in the last two months or so, you may have seen this extra little box pop up on the right for smart alerts. Now, if you aren't a paying user of the module yet, you would just get a little teaser here saying we have an entry for curry powder that you might want to investigate for the 153 different warnings we've tabulated for our automatic system. Now, since I actually have full access to it, why don't we actually jump into this curry powder record and see what information would be there that could be useful at this stage of the sourcing process. So I actually loaded that up in a background tab over here. So I just switched over to the curry powder entry that's within the Smart Alerts module right here within this tab. Now, before I get to this grand alerts pane, let me toggle over to the ingredient information section to give a little bit more of the lay of the land. So what do we tabulate in here? Of course, we have a little introduction to what curry powder is. I'm not gonna read that off for you. We also see where curry powder falls in our grand taxonomy of ingredients. This taxonomy now spans, I believe, 40,000 entries. It can get very, very specific. It could be aloe vera, root, extract, and you would have all the interesting information very particular to that part of a plant and even that form of the plant. So what are we doing here in the background? We've tapped into a whole lot of different databases, things like FDA, RASFF. We have a partnership with the University of Minnesota and all of their food databases, uh, things that range from being an encyclopedia to issues around adulteration worldwide. So all these different databases are things that you may be looking into today, and it can take a lot of time. You might be searching one database off of a certain code, going into another database, typing in curry powder, 
maybe typing in the Ayurvedic version, the naming convention of an ingredient. Point is, it can be pretty hard to find the exact needle in a haystack information. We're trying to automate that for you. So what do we have going here? So we have curry powder, we see where it falls in the system. We also have some little notices up here, whether or not we already are using the ingredient or have been searching for it in Market Hub. In this case, since I just began that journey, I got a bunch of zeros on here. We also have the ability to sign up for future alerts. But first, before I do that, let's look at what these actual alerts are. So let me toggle over here to the alerts tab. So right up top, we have this nice global map, but most of the information I wanna poke around at today is below the fold. So here we have a grand table sorted by date with the most recent bits of information or incidents up top. And you can see how we're pulling in things relating to curry powder from the FDA, from RASFF. Not only are we pulling things in from multiple sources, we're pulling in different types of alerts. Could be recalls of more of a finished good product. Could be import alerts of a raw ingredient. Could be information, just things about the potential for mycotoxins to be found in, let's see, uh, curry powder coming out of Sri Lanka. These are all things that you can kind of paw through. Not just seeing this top level information of what the alert was, the product that was concerned, the company it was coming from, the origin of the alert, but you could actually tap into any of these. I'll just open up one or two in the background here and we could see how we've pulled in the information from the FDA in this case, where they caught a curry powder out of Bangladesh that had some sort of issue with it. I'm not gonna read through all that text on us here. The second alert I pulled up was an FDA recall. This one of uh, more of a finished product that apparently had some pathogenic microorganisms within it. Uh, geez, the word salmonella is popping out to me at the bottom. That's something scary right there. So that was a very particular use case we dove right into. That was bits of information that might be interesting to you as you're deciding whether or not Reno Nevada's high quality organics company has a good version of curry powder. Maybe they're sourcing it themselves from Bangladesh where we solved those issues. Maybe that would change your safety plan, your HACCP plan about bringing this ingredient in. Now let's take on a different tact. Let's jump right over to the heart of the module, which I have queued up here in yet another window. So here we are as a fictional company, SMC Butterhouse, which has a whole host of our different modules up and running, including smart alerts. So what I wanna to do today is take a little look about how you can use this module for research, but almost more importantly, how you can tie these different alerts to the actual ingredients that you're pulling in and tracking in the item supplied tab. And that's really a big differentiator between our system and others. We're not just an isolated research area. We're a place where you can subscribe to very particular alerts that are related to the suppliers you're working with and the items that you're buying. That said, this opening page of Smart Alerts, the search page, is pretty generic. Of course, we have a search box up top, which we're gonna to come to in a moment. But then as we scroll down through the page, we start to just bubble up information that's kind of interesting. We toss together a few graphs of uh, what's the most common origin of alerts over the last 90 days. Not too surprised based off of the suppliers that are in our network, which are worldwide, that we're seeing alerts that span all these different regions. But of course, some of the most uh, biggest importers, let's say China, USA, Canada, that's where we're seeing a big bulk of the alerts. We also have this fun chart over here to the right. Is anything trending recently? Looks like as summer was coming through, uh, a bunch of dried peppers and hot peppers were having alerts. Maybe that's a seasonal issue, or maybe it has to do with a certain country having stronger border restrictions on it. Interesting information, maybe not related to what you are sourcing today, but neat to see. Now, further down below the fold, we expose even more stuff. To the right, here's a little glimpse of that taxonomy I was speaking of. You can see how we've categorized all these ingredients into different categories based off of all those different coding systems. Based off of those coding systems, we're hitting up all these different databases and pulling in the information, hopefully in a more useful format than what you would find if you had to go to FDA yourself, to RASFF yourself. Yet again though, here we're just showing off the most recent alerts. Literally we're pulling them in every single 24 hours, so almost live, but again, these are probably not quite related to your actual ingredients. So let's get into a different tact here. Let's try doing maybe a search 
where we're gonna go through another ingredient to get into the depths of this, and then we'll close out with how this is actually tied to your supply chain. So let's do another ingredient. Since we had curry powder on the mind, why don't I go with turmeric this round? So when I search for turmeric, we actually break down the search results in a few different ways to help you find what's gonna be uh, most of use. The first tier of how we break things down is between food style ingredients and dietary supplement ingredients. On the food side, we break them down into quite a few different categories. Looks like turmeric falls into two different realms, naturally a uh, spices type realm and all of so one where it is a major isolated ingredient, additive flavor, baking or processing aid. In this case, you probably wanna look at this section here and say, all right, turmeric root, spice or powder. Looks like there's been quite a few alerts, even some recent ones. We also see a little indication that we're not yet monitoring this, but if we wanted to subscribe to future alerts, we could click that little button here or in quite a few other spots and it would give you the ability to sign up for email updates or to have the information about this pop up on your own little global map. For this example go, let's take a little bit of a different uh, tact. I'm going to click over to the dietary supplements tab where we also have turmeric broken down into a few different categories ranging from some proprietary ingredients to a botanicals category which has everything under the sun like I was speaking of before different species, different parts, different preparations. Probably the easiest way to find the most relevant information is to change the way we're looking at this. So instead of having them broken down by category, let's see everything in a table. And not only that, we can look at these in a sortable table. So I can just bubble up to the top what has had the most total alerts or what's had the most alerts in the last 90 days, entire year, etc. So why don't we go into this uh, turmeric rhizome root right here and see what's going on for the moment. So I click into this record and what it's doing in the background, and it takes a moment here, is loading up the information from those different databases. So since we are in the dietary supplement realm for this ingredient, we actually have three tabs available to us. Uh, one of them is that alerts tab, again, that global map with the most recent alerts. Looks like there's been things going on with it being sourced from India, also Jamaica. We have that second tab, ingredient information. This one has a particularly rich taxonomy area where we get that glimpse of whether we want to research turmeric root, extract powder, powder in a particular form, whatever it may be. The last tab we had here is the regulatory tab. This one's kind of interesting. Here we tap into a lot of different databases to give you a little bit of a historic perspective around this ingredient. On the dietary supplement realm, this is around whether it was maybe pre de or not. In this case, we have some interesting info. So turmeric as the actual root wasn't particularly listed in herbs of commerce or on any of the different pre de lists. There also haven't been any NDI submissions or grass notifications on that or any of the other kind of host of information we pull in. But we're seeing here in this related matches column that one level up in the taxonomy for just good old turmeric, we've had all these different entries. It's listed in herbs of commerce. Three different industry trade groups have it as a pre de chez ingredient. What's kind of interesting here is if I decided to go up one step in this database to just curcuma longa, as our vocab term for the day, I can see information kind of related to that tier of the taxonomy. And of course, on the regulatory side, it's going to be a little bit more rich. So now in the direct matches column, which says, all right, what database stuff did we pull in for precisely this entry? We see a whole lot more things. Herbs of commerce, pre de chez lists, grass affirmations, NDI submissions. These we actually pull in through our partnership with APA. Um, for a lot of them, we actually have the full documentation here. In this case, we can see the back and forth from amino care products with the FDA, see why they thought they needed to actually submit one of these when it does seem to be an ingredient that's been around for quite a long time. So in the background here, we're actually loading up the documentation, which we got from the FDA via that partnership with APA. Here's that document. I guess it took a few minutes to load because it was six pages long. Here's that entire correspondence, which we can go through. So at this point, we've done some pretty interesting research on turmeric. Uh, what might we want to do next? We might want to sign up for that monitoring here. When we sign up for that monitoring, we can actually decide exactly which tier of information we want to be alerted on. 
So if we only want new alerts about turmeric root that's dried, I could sign up for just that. Or in this case, since I probably want to accumulate all the information about the different parts and preparations, I would subscribe to this alert level, the top level one. I could also decide if I want these things to be emailed to me or if I want to connect it to any of the ingredients I'm using and tracking in supplier management. So let's take a little jump over sideways to that. So here's all this information. We've just been doing pure research at this point, but we want to tie this to our actual supply chain. And there's a few different avenues for that. One of them is going to be over here in our item supplied section, which I pulled up here in the background. So here you can set up a new dashboard. I called this one simply the smart alerts dashboard. That is all the ingredients you're sourcing. Green tea from basic ingredients, Swiss cheese from Castle Tech Foods, anchovy powder from AM Sweeteners. Whether or not it's a sweetener, that I will leave up for debate. So the information in the columns off to the right are tapped into the Smart Alerts module. We have ones here for when was the most recent warning. That's what we're sorted by here. That's why we have some from August, just about a day ago for me. We also have how many recent warnings have there been? How many total warnings have they been? So how did the system know this? How did it know to tie our item supply to this new module? It's actually a pretty simple setup here. So now that I click into the trace station view of this ingredient, I see here at the bottom this new smart alerts area. In advance of this, I already kind of tagged it and said, this product that we're pulling in from AM Sweeteners, uh, it's an anchovy. So I want to tap into that Smart Alerts database and pull in the data from there. If I wanted to kind of associate this with another fish, I could go in here and start to type in fish and it would pull in all the different entries in that gigantic taxonomy, get as specific as you want, pick out mudfish or fermented fish, whatever it may be. We're also going to be introducing soon an automated tool. So if you have perhaps hundreds, if not thousands of items supplied entries, we can do the automatic matching for you, speed up onboarding. So let's take another little avenue to think how we can connect this, how we can make it really be a network connected module. So that was one angle, looking at things from the item supplied tab. But if I go back over to Smart Alerts, we can also explore things through this alert section. So on that opening page, the search page, we had that global map of every single alert, probably not that useful. This alerts tab though, pulls together a map of only the things that are relevant to you. How does it know that? It shows here the different smart alerts you've signed up for, essentially what we just saw on that item supplied page. So if you're buying almond and hazelnut paste, you could have it be tracked in this one particular map. And you can also make some decisions of whether or not you want to get those email notifications or not, and wherever you want it to be showing up at this very moment within the map. In this case, we have most of them turned on, alerts for a handful. And of course, we have a little bit of an inkling here saying, why are we tracking this in the map? Ah, because we're actually buying this and we're tracking it in supplier management. So this map, let's go back to the alerts tab here, now that we're done editing, shows off just the alerts that are relevant to you. So what we picture people doing is coming into this module maybe once a week, scrolling through, maybe using a little filter here on date, and saying what things have popped up recently about the various ingredients that I'm tracking. And in this case, anchovies was a really prime example because a lot of the most recent alerts were around anchovies. You might look at this information and say, ah, no big deal. I'm not sourcing mine from Korea. That's just fine. Or maybe on the flip side, you're going to be very, very alarmed knowing that you're getting them for this exact company, G East Cold Storage Co. Limited. And you might say, oh boy, this is a major issue. I need to hop on over to my item supplied tab downgrade that supplier, tell people to no longer use the ingredient, change some statuses. And heck, maybe instead of doing this manually, you want to have that fully automated via our workflow system. So that's kind of the idea. You know, this information is all over the world, literally. It can be tricky to find and extremely hard to stay on top of. We pull this information in for you, bubble up the things that are most relevant, and tie it to the rest of our module so you can actually take action off of this. So on that note, I'm going to pull back to the top level page of the Smart Alerts module and wrap this demo, and uh, we can take it from here. Thanks, everybody.
I'll just uh, keep talking so people aren't lying, uh, coming in and worried that their sound isn't working. Again, video runs a little long for the, the previous presentation, so I'm going to give it a few extra minutes so everybody's able to uh, get logged into the session, and we'll be tackling some of the questions that popped up during the presentation for smart alerts. Uh, you know, we also prepared some additional information. Maybe we'll get in there. Uh, I'll do a screen share so you got some other additional resources that you can refer to. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started. We got a good amount of people in here now that have gone and seen the presentation. Uh, you know, I, I wanna, I'm gonna kind of kick this off with a question that I think in, in many variations has been half the questions we've seen, which is where are we sourcing uh, information populating the Smart Alerts database? Uh, and so, Dave, I'm going to let you get started with that one. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing the screen while you're talking, uh, and I'm going to show people a, a resource where they can go look at that information and answer some of the questions. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, like you may have heard in the presentation, you know, we said we've got you know hundreds of sources that we're going out to, uh, and those can be you know wide ranging. So it's a lot of uh, information like going directly to the FDA or to RASF. Um, some other organizations, you know, UNPA, some others. Uh, there's a lot of proprietary uh, partnerships that we have, like uh, we highlighted today with the University of Minnesota. Um, so some of their data science and some of their predictive analytics go into the system. Uh, and then we're also going out and scraping the web. We're looking at other publications, uh, other subscriptions, and some other proprietary data sources. So Really, it's, it's a wide variety of information from across the globe. Um, and it really is bringing in and kind of collating all of that information uh, and lining it up uh, you know, to our taxonomy like you saw. So that's part of the magic. It's not just where's the data coming from, but also how do we organize it? How do we collect it and quantify it in such a way to make sense of it? You, know, you say tomato, I say tomato. Well, we put those together, we grab all of that data, and it lines up in our taxonomy. And then we go out and we update that on a daily basis. So every 24 hours, uh, our system is going out, updating the databases and bringing in all of the new relevant updates and alerts. And uh, while David was talking there, I brought up a screen that you can all go visit. Uh, this is just at the tracegames.com website. Uh, and I've gone ahead and gone over to the products drop down and, and brought up smart alerts. Uh, you know, it's our job to look smart, like we know everything about the products, but I'm going to give a little shout out to our marketing team because they put great information up here on the site. And uh, when somebody asked this earlier, I actually just came in here and uh, cut and paste from here so I could look smart where I'm really just getting a whole lot of help here. And you'll see there, kind of like David alluded to, you know, data so sources are going to include everything from the FDA, uh, the rapid alert system. Uh, you know, we have that unique partnership with uh, the University of Minnesota's Food Protection and Defense Institute. So you're going to see a lot of unique data that some of the other products that some people are mentioning uh, in the chat do not uh, have. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that to, to segue to another common question that I saw during the session, which is, uh, you know, how does this differ from something like a Discernus or a Horizon Scan? Uh, and I think uh, really the easiest way to tackle that is, is, and you may have seen this, is that it integrates with your existing trace game software. So if you're currently using fire management, uh, you could by all means, you, know, you could jump in here, you could go to smart alerts, you can kind of find those needles in the haystack, maybe you're interested in doing a search for a particular ingredient. Um, and, and that's how a lot of those other services work. You know, they're gathering up all the data and then you need to go find what's relevant for you. Uh, where we're able to differentiate is when you're operating in the area where you store all the information for uh, your items, it is actually possible uh, to come into this record. Uh, I'll give this a chance to load here and we'll see on the left-hand side, I can add a smart alert. And I've actually already added a few of them here where I've connected to any searches related to chili sauce, as well as chili peppers, Maybe I need to come in here and, uh, you know, we can also add chili powder. So what's going to happen is the system is automatically going to pull out any of those alerts that are happening in Smart Alerts. And I'm able to see them here in the record where 
I'm more likely working day to day. Uh, and uh, you know, if you kind of want to hit the easier but the easy button even more. What we recommend doing is building something like a smart alerts dashboard, where you know, here's an example we built out where we're keeping track of, all right, well, what alerts happen for my particular items in the next last 30 days? Yeah, you know, I also want a historical. What's all the data that's in there? So I could get a very quick picture of, uh, you know, historically, uh, what what things am I working with that tend to have a, a lot of issues? Uh, and so, you know, that that's going to be the big win here is, uh, you know, not only the access to the data that we're providing from all the sources that we're pulling, but let's go ahead and make it relevant. Let's go ahead and make it about you. All right, I'm gonna quickly see, maybe we have some more questions. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll just continue to drop some knowledge on you guys to extend from the original session. Uh, not seeing too much else out there. I know that there was a, a question uh, about integration uh, and, uh, you know, I, I believe that was answered. You know, that's something that we're continuing to, to look at and opportunities for that. Um, let's go ahead and see what else I have here. We got, um, we already addressed using uh, some of the other systems. Uh, Callouts for food fraud. So yes, absolutely, that's something that's included in those databases, and I believe particularly the the um, database from the University of Minnesota deals very heavily with both adulteration and uh, food uh, food fraud. Um, there was a question of who has the better Zoom background, and I think that was correctly answered by Helen, which is mine, Pawnee forever. Uh, I, I think there's some internal bias. Uh, you know, so one of the other questions we've gotten a lot this week, and Smart Alerts has popped up quite a bit, is uh, does the information include recalls? And, and I, I think a few people are, have been familiar with Smart Alerts, but uh, that was kind of a, a phased mission. And so I'll, I'll kind of let you handle that and let people know uh, what, what's, what did we do with the system. Yeah, if you could uh, maybe direct your screen back over to the Smart Alerts tab, we can kind of show all of the different types of data that are coming through. You know, so here, kind of on the Smart Alerts home screen, you know, there's a kind of a summary of recent activity. So you saw those, um, you know, alerts and informational updates. Uh, but if you go in and actually do a search uh, for any particular ingredient, and I'll, uh, I'll talk while Jason drives here, um, we can actually kind of demonstrate some of the different types of uh, alerts, warnings, notifications that are available, and you can actually filter through those. So, you know, if we were to go into any one of these, you'll see things like potentially, you know, those um, import warnings or rejections. You'll see advisories. Uh, if there is a recall issued by the FDA, that would be listed as well. Um, so, a lot of that information is available, and you can search and sort by the type. Uh, of updates you're looking for as well. Sure, and I'll pull that up here. Looks like, yeah, you can. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to see, yeah, and I'm sure you, some people probably caught this during the presentation, but, uh, you know, similar to our own, you know, a typical of what you see in the dashboards for our software, you're going to be able to filter this type of content. So, you know, I can go ahead and decide, do I want to focus specifically on an FDA refusal versus do I want to see FDA recalls? or product alerts, uh, you know, the fair incident. So this is gonna, uh, so really this is a long way of saying yes, we do handle recalls uh, and you can also filter across that information. I wanna get in there and see that. Uh, let's see, I had I think one other question here we can tackle and this one's come up actually multiple times throughout this week as well. And that was how far back does the data that's represented here in smart alerts go? You want to be our expert there? <laughs> I'll put you. Yeah, I'll put on my expert cap. Um, you know, really, it depends on the data source that we are connected to. Some of those, you know, both update more frequently and have kind of a deeper, deeper historical archive of their information. Uh, but in some cases, that information is going back, you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven years. Uh, in some instances, others, you know, it only goes back. Uh, you know, a year or two. So it really depends on the type of information, but there are, you know, years worth of data available in the system. Uh, you know, and I would also point out that while that historical information is absolutely relevant and usable, 
um, you know, and kind of referencing different types of activities, repeat activities, repeat risk over time. Um, you know, you can sort the system uh, uh, by the most recent events as well. And, you know, those might be the types of events uh, and warnings and alerts that you'd want to monitor because those are going to have the most immediate impact uh, in your supply chain. You know, the things that are happening today, yesterday, last week, last month uh, are going to probably have a higher degree of, you know, risk or relevancy to you. All right, so we just had another question pop up in here, and that was, uh, can we export data? So my understanding, at least right now, is that the data that you're seeing in the actual Smart Alerts tab, uh, you know, there is not a, a tab to export that data. However, you know, again, we're going back to that idea of the integration with your, your current items that you're working with. Obviously, you can export this data uh, from within the, the supplier management module. So, uh, you know, when you set up these dashboards, like I showed earlier, that have all your different ingredients that you're working with uh, and the alerts that have popped up, and I could certainly bring in other data points here that, uh, you know, call back or harken back to that smart alerts, that you're going to be able to export out of the system for uh, reporting purposes. But obviously, you know, we value the data that's on our, our uh, database here that we're pulling all this together. We're not going to, at least for night, right now, we're not going to go ahead and just let people just pull all that out of the system and, and uh, you know, we need to protect that source that's ours. I'll give this, uh, you know, I'll give you, we got, we'll call it the two minute clock here. If anybody has any other questions, uh, you know, I'll, uh, while well, I give you a chance to, to ask things up there in the chat, just going to remind people again, you know, you're able to go to the website. There's some, uh, really great top level information in here that's available for you if you're wondering, hey, what advisories are we uh, going ahead and being uh, making sure that we're looking at when we're trying to figure out what data sources we want? Uh, you know, what are the various regulations out there, whether it's food, beverage, or supplements that are driving this? Uh, all that information is here. Uh, obviously, uh, you're going to be able to go back at any point if you want to rewatch the Smart Alerts presentation. Uh, I believe that's going to be available for the rest of this week, and then eventually it'll be archived and, and available on request after that. All right, I don't see any other questions, so um, let's let's call this the end of TGCon. I believe if we were all in the same city, we'd all be kind of moseying on down to the, the conference uh, hotel bar at this point. So, you know, hey, if you got them, go ahead and open one, and, and thank you for coming out to the conference, uh, you know, hopefully you learned something, uh, maybe had an opportunity to see some of our great presenters and, and want to be able to reach out to them, uh, hear more about the great things that they're doing with our software. Of course, all the, the Trace Gain staff is, is always available to answer your questions. You know, if you want to go ahead and get a, see a deeper dive into some of the stuff that you saw this week, uh, you want to go ahead and, and see your own demo, bring some more people on board. Obviously, that's something we're going to be able to do. So reach out to your Trace Games people. Uh, and everyone, thanks again. Hey, and Jason, I have a, a, a closing question for you as well. Speaking of happy hour, uh, if everyone in their different cities virtually over Zoom goes out and gets a drink and they send those receipts to you, are you going to expense it all? <laughs> uh, I'll put it on your card, card buddy. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.